cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Hey everyone, today I want to talk about a season 7 theory, or possibly season 8, that is very undoubtedly meant to unfold at some point in both A Song of Ice and Fire and the Game of Thrones show. This video is about the Voloncar prophecy. Naturally, this topic includes major book spoilers. In A Feast for Crows, the fourth book in the series, young adolescent Cersei Lannister visits the tent of Maggie the Frog with her friend Malera Heatherspoon. Maggie is actually her nickname, with her real name being Maggie. We find this out in a conversation between Kyburn and Cersei. The small folk used to call her Maggie. Maggie? Is that how you say it? The woman would suck a drop of blood from your finger and tell you what your morrows held. Blood magic is the darkest kind of sorcery. Some say it's the most powerful as well. Maggie uses blood magic, which we know is the strongest kind of magic. Let's read the in-text background on her. The old woman's eyes were yellow, encrusted all about with something vile. In Lannisport, it was said that she had been young and beautiful when her husband had brought her back from the east with a load of spices, but age and evil had left their marks on her. Upon entering the tent, Cersei and Malara were told, Be gone, she told the girls, in a croaking whisper. We came for a foretelling, young Cersei told her. Be gone, croaked the old woman a second time. We heard that you can see into the morrow, said Malara. We just want to know what men we're going to marry. Be gone, croaked Maggie a third time. Listen to her. The queen would have cried if she had her tongue. You still have time to flee. Run, you little fools. The girl with the golden curls put her hand upon her hips. Give us our foretelling or I'll go tell my lord father and have you whipped for insolence. Please, begged Malara. Just tell us our futures, then we'll go. Some are here who have no futures, Maggie muttered in her terrible, deep voice. Malara died shortly after visiting the tent from falling down a well. Maggie accurately predicted her imminent death, and her accuracy should not go unnoticed. Come, if you will not go. Fools, come, yes, I must taste your blood. Malara paled, but not Cersei. A lioness does not fear a frog, no matter how old and ugly she might be. She should have gone, she should have listened, she should have run away. Instead, she took the dagger Maggie offered her and ran the twisted iron blade across the ball of her thumb. Then she did Malara too. In the dim green tint, the blood seemed more black than red. Maggie's toothless mouth trembled at the sight of it. Here, she whispered, give it here. When Cersei offered her hand, she sucked away the blood with gums as soft as a newborn babe's. The queen could still remember how queer and cold her mouth had been. Three questions may you ask, the crone said, once she had her drink. You will not like my answers. Ask or be gone with you. This next part is when the prophecy is born. When will I wed the prince, she asked. Never, you will wed the king. Okay, Cersei will marry a king. And indeed, she marries King Robert Baratheon. Right then, Cersei actually got confused, and for years she thought Rhaegar would be the king she married, once his father died. I will be queen, though? asked the younger her. Aye, malice gleamed in Maggie's yellow eyes. Queen you shall be, until there comes another, younger, and more beautiful, to cast you down and take all that you hold dear. Remember that last part, I'll dive into it in a bit. Anger flashed across the child's face. If she tries, I will have my brother kill her. Even then she would not stop, willful child as she was. She still had one more question due her, one more glimpse into her life to come. Will the king and I have children, she asked. Oh, aye, six and ten for him, and three for you. The three are Cersei's three children with Jaime, Joffrey, Marcella, and Tommen. The six and ten is the sixteen of Robert Baratheon's bastards. That made no sense to Cersei. Her thumb was throbbing where she cut it, and her blood was dripping on the carpet. How could that be? She wanted to ask, but she was done with her questions. The old woman was not done with her, however. Maggie continued speaking, even though Cersei had asked her three questions. Gold shall be their crowns, and gold their shrouds, she said, and when your tears have drowned you, the Voloncar shall wrap his hands about your pale white throat 
and choke the life from you. What is a Volunkar? Some monster? The Golden Girl did not like that foretelling. So what is a Volunkar? It's High Valyrian. It means little brother. She had asked Septa Saranella about the word after Melara drowned. Okay, so from this prophecy, three impactful events must take place. A younger queen will take everything Cersei holds dear. Her three children will die, which has finally happened in the show in the season 6 finale. And Cersei's own death at the hands of the Voloncar or little brother. Okay, so let's break it down. Who is the younger queen? Everyone is going to shout out Daenerys Targaryen. Why? Because she is pretty much the only woman that is fighting for the throne that is still alive and everyone expects her to take the throne, thus fulfilling the section of the prophecy. I won't dig into other possible younger queens in the book series. Let's just stick with where the show is leading us. We will say for now, Danny may be the likely prophesized younger queen. Now let's talk about the main secret to this foretelling. Who is going to kill Cersei? Cersei has long believed Tyrion to be the Volunkar. She has many dreams and thoughts throughout her chapters in A Feast for Crows in which she sees visions of Tyrion breaking into the Red Keep and murdering her. He is definitely her little brother, both in terms of age and physically, but it's almost too predictable, so I wouldn't think he is the best candidate. Jaime, on the other hand, is the obvious candidate that Cersei is overlooking, much to the fact that he is her lover and lovers couldn't possibly hurt each other, right? Cersei's misinterpretation would be found as both ironic and poetic, since her killer could be the one person she loves most. Also, Jaime is Cersei's twin, but he was born after her, hence, little brother. Jaime and I are more than brother and sister. We are one person in two bodies. We shared a womb together. He came into this world holding my foot, our old maester said. I almost want to believe he will be her strangler, and then kill himself right after. Listen to the clues from the text. Jamie thinks to himself, I cannot die while Cersei lives, he told himself. We will die together as we were born together. Then, we will leave this world together as we once came into it. Later on, Cersei states, If he were dead, I would know it. We came into this world together, uncle. He would not go without me. Later on, Jamie and Cersei think of each other as more strangers than lovers. It shows that they are growing apart. He was your twin, your shadow, your other half, another voice whispered. Once, perhaps, she thought, no longer. He has become a stranger to me. I thought that I was the warrior and Cersei was the maid, but all the time she was the stranger, hiding her true face from my gaze. Jamie is certainly the fan favorite for being revealed as the Volunkar. The love that the two once shared for each other makes this death the death Cersei deserves. And let me be clear, the books can turn out a different result, like we have seen the show do numerous times with different plot lines. The younger queen could actually be a few other candidates, but in the show, it wouldn't make much sense, and the Volunkar could be interpreted as a younger sibling, translating to a more gender-neutral alternative to younger brother. I mean, just think of how many younger siblings running around Westeros would like to strangle Cersei. But as we know, the most poetic death would be from the one she least expects. Let me know if you agree or disagree with what I think the show will do with the prophecy in the next season. Thanks everyone for watching, have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.